Welcome to the VIP Millennium Children webinar. The idea of this is that you get little insights that align with uh, the Millennium Children Door One, a revolutionary approach to confidence and self-esteem in children, and Door Two, empowering the Millennium Children, proven methods to help your child of any age thrive in life. And uh, I'm going to go through some info, but at the end, we're going to go through a couple of tip bips and we're going to talk a little bit about the Millennium Grid, what happens at certain ages, and then I want you to ask lots of questions. So let's start the game and see how we go. And um, how many of you have purchased um, the two books, Millennium Children and Empowering Millennium Children? Yeah, I have, Amy. Awesome, thank you. And Ruthie, I can see your message down there. Wonderful. And I just launched on Facebook about half an hour, three quarters of an hour ago, the physical books have arrived. So I'm really excited. Now we've got hard copies of the books. Um, and thank you very much for your support in um, helping me to help the future generation. I'm really grateful for that. So. What is happening for children? Why do we box them in? I love Einstein. He says we are boxed in by the boundary conditions of our thinking. And I, I truly believe that in the education and health system, my two greatest passions, one having been through the school system as a child myself, my children, and also as a nurse, I notice everything is categorized and boxed. And when we do that, we do it to understand but when we do do that, we actually create these limitations, especially in regards to children. And yet our imagination leads to reality. Children come into the world and they just know. They know the bigger picture. They know Santa's going to come. They know they're going to be an astronaut. They know. They just know the big, big awareness. And so is it imagination that they're working from or is it innate wisdom? And ask adults, and I'm just generalizing here of adults and children, tend to say, oh, it's just their imagination. But then our imagination boxes these beautiful children as well. And the way we box them is we say they've got ASD, they're a bad child, they're a bully, they're dumb, they're stupid, they're a no-hoper. Look at that loser that just killed all the kids in America and shot them down. He's not a loser. They're not dumb. They're not stupid. It's just when we box them, we actually keep these boundaries of limitations for the children and we really don't get to know them and they don't get to know themselves. And for me, life is what you perceive it to be. Children beha behavior is perception as well. So I'll just get you to have a look at this image, especially if you've got the webinar images up. If you haven't, that's okay. You'll notice that the horse's head is smack in the middle. And if you look at it, the mane is on the right-hand side. So if you look at the head and follow it down the right-hand side, it looks like the horse's head belongs to the right side horse. But now I want you to close your eyes, take a breath, and open your eyes and look at the horse's head. It can't belong to the right-hand side. It belongs to the left-hand side because look at the way it's turning its head. It actually joins the neck better on the left hand side or did I just make up a whole heap of collie wobble and that's what I did I made up just perception I could have told you anything really who cares where the head belongs it's about how we see children and how they behave is all perception and if I see their behavior as um, a, a calling out for help a sign, a symptom, a symbol, something, and it might not be about them. It might be me as the adult, the teacher, the parent, the friend, the auntie, the babysitter, uh, the person in the supermarket. There's something there for me to be aware of as well. And that's what the millennial children are very much here to teach us. They are teachers of awakening. Now, at any stage, you can 
um, ask questions or there's a little box that you can type the questions into um, if your sound is not working. You are all actually unmuted so that we can have you talking at the same time because I want it to be an interactive webinar. So welcome to the Millennium Children Personality. When I got this information as an adult, I always had it as a child, but when I got it as an adult, I always saw the personalities as one. And a beautiful, beautiful graphic designer, her sister's on the webinar tonight, and I'm very blessed to have her as well as um, the graphic designer create the emblem for me. I said to the designer, please, they're all one symbol. And so if you look at the Millennium Children symbol, uh, you will see the diamond, you'll see my cursor, the diamond shape. It's very perfect. It symbolizes a crystal, which is all about seeing everything in perfect. You'll see the star shape with the star children. You'll see the hearts. These are the aqua, and they see things in duality, good, bad. And then you'll see the movement of the rainbow. And what we're going to do is we're going to go briefly through the personalities because I want you to be able to have some tips and things and a little bit of the Millennium Grid afterwards. Um, so over the years I've been teaching Millennium Children and I've got case studies from clients and who I've worked with in all sorts of areas. And so my dream was to have these courses as well as medical intuitive courses all under the umbrella of Millennium Modality uh, accredited. And so even this course is now accredited so teachers, childcare workers, childcare centres, etc. can claim professional development points when they learn this sort of work. And also to have it recognised so that these children can blossom. Welcome to the aqua child, the heart. And these little sausages work from heart space, but then when they get in their mind, they so can look like they're bipolar or emotionally erratic. And they can have this volcanic eruption where they're really, really happy, happy, happy. And then you say something simple as go and have your bath, clean up your room. And we're talking about primary school and teenagers and children up until the age of 25 that you say something simple, pop your clothes away and boom, they've just gone into this emotional volcano. So the heart duality represent that they're in their heart head space. So let's have a look at this picture and what do you see here? So I'm going to get you all to participate in this with me. What do you see when you see this little boy? So you can talk, guys, or you can... Um, He's talk. angry. Angry, awesome. What else do you see? Well, passion. What He's was that really one? Passion, I love it. Passion, yeah. yeah. What else can I see? Where do you think he is? Fierce support. Fierce <laughs> support. <laughs> what else? Where do you think he is? Football. Yeah, the football. Football. Okay. So what what sort of language is he speaking there with that finger? And and by the way, we're allowed to swear on this webinar. <laughs> it's between all of us when we speak on this webinar. What do you think he's saying? A bit of a fuck you. A yeah, bit of a fuck <laughs> you. Yeah, or up yours. Yeah. All right. Awesome. <laughs> Who taught him that? Who taught him to do that? His Dad. parents. His parents. And what was the other person? An adult. An adult? Who else would have taught him to do I that? I said an adult. Oh, an adult, yes. Who else would have taught him to do that? The media. The who, Dylan? I said the media. Like oh, the media. media. Yes, the media, yeah. yes. All right, so now yeah. we've just done everything I said at the beginning. Um, I'm just going to go back to that <laughs> now. We just box that little boy. We just completely zoned them into a box. Now, I do it every time I teach this and share this on purpose. Um, and why do we box? Because we're trying to understand these children. But these children cannot be boxed whatsoever. So, yes, he does look mm. passionate or he could look angry. Um, where did he learn that symbol? Look, he might not have learned it from anyone. He might have just mimicked it for himself. 
Um, yes, we've got like a football type thing, the two la naked ladies on his uh, chest and his uh, sleeve. They're a symbol that I've seen on the back of big semi-trailer trucks. I'm not sure what they mean. Um, it could be at the football, who knows? But there's some attitude there. And the aquas are all about attitude. They're all about passion. They're all about breaking boundaries. And they can be misunderstood. This little boy could be seen as the bully. The one that is saying, as we said, we'll, we can swear in this webinar, the fuck you attitude or get lost or the whatever. But really, he's just saying, I'm here with full passion and I'm just going to break through the old boundaries. And what happens with the aquas? They can be misunderstood as bullies. They can be misunderstood as bombastic, mm -hmm. um, as forceful, as arrogant. Sometimes they can even be misunderstood. The trendy words at the moment is narcissistic. Um, I don't actually believe there's a narcissistic thing. I still believe that when people behave a certain way, there's still a story behind. But these little sausages are up front in your face and they're here in this dimension especially, to break down all the old barriers. So this mm. afternoon, um, before I did a Facebook Live and also this webinar, I spoke to a teacher in Brisbane and a beautiful little aqua girl who is in preppy. So they've just been at school, what, two, three weeks, four weeks of that, um, had an eruption and I went, oh, it's an aqua. And she got very physical and really hurt a teacher quite badly. And there's going to be consequence, blah, blah, blah. But I said, you know what? That little girl has got great passion. She's trying to communicate. And the way Aquas communicate is physical. Look at that little boy. It's a very physical bang in <laughs> your face. So Aquas are really good at physical activity. They, they need to learn kinesthetically. They'll go into a Shawoski crystal shop, you know, all the thousands of dollars where you just don't touch it. They'll pick up that Shawoski uh, cup or glass that's probably worth $200 and they'll have a look and they'll drop it and then they'll walk away and say, oh, that's how it breaks. Okay, and walk away. They need to kinesthetically learn hands-on. They're the ones that learn the best by using their fingers, by touching. A lot of these children will lick things and smell things. And parents will say, there's something fruity wrong with my child. They're kinesthetic. They need to learn experientially. These yeah. ones detest, hate, will reject, will fight, will force, will rebel if you say this crunchy word called no. You say no to an aqua, welcome to a fight. Even when they're six months old, 60 years old, aquas don't like the word no. <laughs> they like to be able to know that everything is possible. And so saying to an aqua, they can't have something. And remember, I'm talking toddler, primary school, high school, um, even up to 25 years old, that to an aqua, you would say later, maybe, not now, hmm, possibly, you will just give them, think they will push, they're the salespeople and they will push and say, yeah, but now, what about now? How come? Why can't mm -hmm. I? They're fantastic. These are the teachers to break things down and teachers' potentiality. They're the little sausages that will jump up onto the roof and fly because they know they can fly because they're tapping into Lemuria <laughs> and they know that anything is possible and that you can teleport and telepathic and oh, they broke their leg. That's okay. We'll get back onto the roof again. These are the ones I get the most inquiries slash complaints about, and I love them. I absolutely love the aquas. They were the ones I was personally frightened of at school and was bullied by, but now as I work with them, they're the most dynamic, amazing souls ever on teaching potentiality. Any questions before I move on? Mm. No questions? Um, please ask questions as we go along. As you can see, I speak really fast and excited. I want you to get the most out of this. Um, but if there's something at the end or you want to wait till the end, just write your questions down. 
Now we're going to go on to an example, Steve Irwin. Potentiality, broke all the boundaries. These sausages are the humanitarians. Steve Irwin wore the same uniform. He loved animals. He saw the potential in animals. Um, they will go out on a risk. Look at him diving into the water and swimming with dangerous stingrays. Um, and they have no awareness of danger. And then he tried to pull the bar out of his heart and that took his life. But they love dying for their purpose and they love dying for their mission and their legacy in the world. So they are very out there. Uh, Lady Gaga, Pink, Madonna, they're all aquas. Push the boundaries, push the boundaries. Uh, Eminem, um, most of the rappers, uh, I'm just trying to think, uh, a lot, most of the Olympians are aquas as well uh, and they're possibly crystals as well. So now we'll go on to the crystal and you'll see with the crystal symbol, it's a beautiful, perfect diamond. Crystals love everything to be very lined up and perfect and that can be their downfall as well as their challenge, uh, as well as their gift. So now when you look at this crystal child, what do you see? Serenity. Serenity. What else do you see? Mm. <laughs> Peaceful. Peaceful. Is an aqua asleep. An aqua. Well, <laughs> if, if aqua is asleep, yes. <laughs> and rarely sleep, but yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. um, don't we all want this perfect child? Isn't she so angelic? So beautiful. Mm. Yeah. However. Looks, looks which one? Dreamy. Dreamy. Looks dreamy. Supposedly. And yet, for the crystal child, it's all about overanalyzing using left and right brain. They integrate well at school because they're good at sport and good at academic, but in comes the perfectionism. Even from birth, it, things have to be perfect. If you look at even feeding a baby crystal, a crystal that's a baby, um, you'll notice they eat from the spoon so beautifully compared to an aqua mm. or a star that just won't eat it or everything's just perfect and pretty. Their analytical mm. mind probably starts off at the age of three and they can be quite picky in doing things from even getting into bed. The bed linen needs to be perfect. Their shoes needs to be perfect. They, they just want everything to be totally, totally aligned. They are very good at fitting into systems and they are very harsh on themselves, especially, say, from the age of 11 and probably for the rest of their life, they can be very, very critical on themselves. They can also be critical of others because they forget to use their intuition. They forget that others may struggle. Um, they are very gifted into their intuition, but the analytical left brain will take over. They're here as the healers. So as the aqua bulldozes things down, the crystal comes along and smooches it all together and makes it all lovely, all pretty. And you will find crystals, whether it be a child or if you're rec recognizing yourself in any of these personalities, these are the ones that make things pretty. Uh, so sometimes when I have helpers on my courses, my medical intuitive courses, which are nine days, I know exactly when a crystal's there because she's lining everything up pretty. All the chairs have to be pretty, all the books have to be pretty, and that's their gift. And I think, fantastic, let the crystals in, let them set it up all pretty and aligned. Whereas the aqua, they would just dump the books and go, yeah, whatever type thing. Anybody got questions on the crystal child? So, Jean, yes. when they, when things are, are not perfect for them, yes. what is like the flip side of the crystal child? Oh, the flip side, the flip side, the crystal, mm. a criticism, the critical and oh, judgment. Okay. And it may so be that, that, internal or it might it be external. Turned in on it well, that's both. It, it can be internalized and okay. external. So uh, say a lot of the crystal children say from the age of 10, 11 and upwards uh, are internalizing it by self-mutilation, by cutting themselves and anorexia. Mm. 
and they do it very, because they're system orientated, they're very clever in how they do it. If they cut themselves between, um, mm. say, the nipple line through to the hips, nobody can see it. Um, mm. and it's one way yeah. of um, pushing the pain out. Um, anorexic, mm. so when I was nursing, the crystals would very cleverly measure everything up to be perfect and pedantic and they would work out systems how to have the perfect body. They would rip the pages out of the Bible and vomit in the Bible. They'd open up the plastic pillows. They'd vomit in the pillows and manage to tie them up again. So they internalise the uh, emotions, whereas the aquas will can be more what mm. looks like a violent outside or mm. outside, mm. outside mm. like smashing things, etc. Um, so uh, to support the crystals on the internal critical judgment, it's about teaching them how to uh, feel emotions and express them, which c can be pretty. Drawing a picture, playing with crystals, in module, eh, module, in door two, I talk about um, how to work with emotions. Does that answer your question? Mm, yeah. Yeah. And, and remember, ladies, I'm doing really short snippets. There's YouTube clips and blogs and articles, and a lot of this is in um, door one and door two of the two books. Um, I just wanted to give you a snippet where you could ask me questions and also do the millennium grid, as I said before. So an example would be Doreen Virtue. Uh, Doreen Virtue, good with systems. So she was a psychologist. Um, she then was able to create another business uh, with her own experiences and very successfully. Um, and each system that she's done has been very uh, uh, planned and uh, purposed. Um, it's very structured and tight. Um, it's not like, say, Lady Gaga that's in your face type thing. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. So business-wise, yeah. she saw that her market was saturated with the angel stuff. So uh, last year, this year, I can't remember, she w came out and said, I'm not doing angels anymore. I've gone back to God. So now she's flicking her work over to a new market. It's very tight. But there was some criticism. Another example is Cher. Um, when she found out her daughter, Chastity, was gay, she was repulsed, absolutely repulsed. And yeah. then Chastity gained a lot of weight. Look at Cher with the perfect body, the perfect hair, the perfect lips, but which could have plastic surgery as well. Um, uh, Chastity was everything opposite for a crystal of overweight, gay, not wearing pretty clothes, and it took a long time for Cher to accept the non-pretty fitting into a box type thing. Does that make sense? Mm. That can be yeah. a big challenge mm -hmm. for, even as little children, big challenge, and it's not just girls and boys here, I'm just throwing photos in, it can be a challenge for them because then they limit themselves, which means then they don't access their intuition. Um, a lot of gay men are uh, crystal, um, uh, crystal souls where they can be very pedantic in their outfits and very bitchy. Um, now, that's a general comment, by the way. I'm not saying all men are that way. But the, you'll see the gay crystal gentlemen who, as soon as they're picky and they're very specific on the buttons have to be aligned or the pinstripe has to be the right pinstripe, etc., um, there was a show my boys showed me the other day. I forgot what it was called. It's five um, gay guys that make up men to look good, act good, and everything. It was a fabulous show, but they were crystals. They were just that perfect, perfect space and place, which means that they can be very critical on themselves, which then limits themselves, and then uh, their intuition is closed down. Welcome to the Star Child. These gorgeous beings really relate to, oh, crystals relate to Atlantis. I should have said that before. Um, star Children, they relate to Pallades, uh, the very intergalactic. These are the daydreamers. These are the ones that seem a bit uncoordinated and just not quite here when they're in primary school. But by the time they're in uh, later high school or 
uh, as adults, they seem to totally forget um, any of this beautiful wisdom that they have as a young child. Um, body shape wise, they can have like the round, puppy fat, young looking type um, personality or very thin, awkward, uh, not dressing well personality that you can see here on the slide. Um, they can fantasize, they can be awkward, like if you look at the boy on the man on the left, what would you call him? Now we're going into a nerd. A geek. nerd. Excellent. A nerd. Yeah. Would you call him a geek? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what about the boy on the right? A wannabe. A wannabe? <laughs> Some people might say, you know, he's a loser. Look at him dressed up. He's got a PlayStation remote around his neck. He's got a sheet around him. He's got like a broom handle with another PlayStation thing at the top. He's banded. What's wrong with him? These souls are so intellect that they need this counterbalance of fantasy. And if you've ever heard of a thing called mm. Comic-Con, which is um, a, yeah. a, an expo with all the comic type stuff, or uh, the best example is the Big Bang Theory with Sheldon and all of them. I can't remember the other characters. They need yeah. to fantasize. They're so intellect, and then they go into, I need to like play dress ups and go into that other cosmos world. Uh, they can be the Trekkers, Star Trekkers. Um, they can be really big into Lego. They can be big into kids' toys, um, especially remote cars, trains, planes and things like that. Spend an absolute fortune on them because it's the engineering mind, but it's still very childlike. They can, they're very challenged emotionally to be mature, uh, especially, so example, an aqua likes to grow up quick. If he's five, uh, the aqua, he's really playing at 10 years old. If the star child's five, um, he'll be playing at five probably till he's 10 years old. Um, they mm. don't, their immune system is really poor. They're very sickly and they don't connect to their bodies very well. But it's all on purpose because we'll go back to the aqua, bulldoze things down, new potentiality, crystal does the healing and the stars, they're the engineers, they're the scientists. Why should I connect to my body? I need to use that fantasy imagination. Example, Einstein. Where did he get E equals MC squared from? Where is that come from? So any questions on the star children? What? Um, you might notice too, if you've read any literature about crystal stars and rainbows, um, I deliver in a very grounded, different aspect. Um, for me, all children are of this dimension and not specifically from a particular age or stage or seed pod or dimension or anything because that's the illusion of separation that there's been a mathematical code to have all these personalities um, work as a togetherness, even though the aqua picks on the star, but the star can get back at the aqua. So the aqua will be a bully, punch, say, you know, nasty things, you're a loser, nerd, geek or whatever, but the star retaliates like um, solicitors, very clever in their words that they know aquas don't know, and they also retaliate in intellect. Um, so they'll do really well at school and rub it in the aqua's noses. Um, whereas the crystal, it's all about making things pretty, all about pretty. So an example, these are star children, adults. Star children don't like to be noticed, so their clothes can be very bland. And in this slide, you will see the thinkers, star children are thinkers. So you'll see a lot of them with like the bland t-shirt, the daggy jeans, they're wearing, um, they're thinking. This is, they're playing a game called Warhammer. These little figurine pieces are like little army soldiers. They would hate me saying this, but the little army soldiers that are minimum $90 each, you buy them, you cut them, you paint them. Uh, very intricate because star children are fine motor skills, so they love all that sort of stuff. And then 
on that table, that set of army that they have, you're probably looking at about $2,000 worth of little figurines. They have a box of about 20 dice, they roll the dice, and the soldiers move one centimetre, and they've got these little lines and rulers and things, move one centimetre in an hour. These children are the thinkers. And so they look mm. like they're procrastinating. Children, they don't like to take a leap. They like to think about it. And the, sometimes they think too much and then they think so much that they worry about things. They worry about death. A lot of the star children will say, I'm going to die. I'm dying. I don't want you to die. It's the overanalyzing in the worry, thinking, thinking, thinking. They are addicted to carbs. And you'll see here, I don't know whether you can see my cursor because I can't see it, uh, but they're addicted to the carbs. Uh, there's my cursor. To carbs and sugar. So we've got Coca-Cola and Coca-Cola. Um, but they're very clever in their systems. They take jobs like lawyers, solicitors, uh, scientists, and the government, such as politicians. Any questions on the star children? Excellent. Now we move on to the rainbow, that free-flowing, morphing, dynamic movement of the, of the rainbow child. And the rainbow child, we all come in as rainbow and that we are all four personalities, but we will connect to one depending on what we're doing. So when I'm doing uh, hands-on work of medical intuition, I might access the crystal. When I'm public speaking, I might be a bit more flamboyant and expert like the aqua. And when I'm uh, uh, creating things and making science to things, I might be the more star child. And then when I want to access everything in the absolute, I'll access the rainbow child. So when you look at this picture, what do you see? Connection. Yeah. What else? Imagination. Imagination. Heart energy. What was that one? Heart energy. Heart energy. Mm. It looks like a poster child for the I am statement. Yes. That's beautifully <laughs> So it's that tapping Everything. cosmos type thing. Now, mind you, all children mm. can do it and we can get aquas to do it that can't sit still. We can get stars that can do it, but sometimes they don't want to do it, etc. But the rainbows just seem to have this presence around them. And if you have a look at this little girl, they can be misdiagnosed as autism, Asperger's, mm. ADD, ASD, 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, whatever they want to call it. <laughs> but where is this little girl? Where is she, what is she accessing? Who is she being? Mm. Um, they have the Adam ability. Body. They just walk into a room and they can see whether it's a majority, aquas, crystals, rainbows, what it is, and they'll morph into the situation need be. But they'll also morph into, if they need to be an aqua because the teacher or the parent needs a wake up, they'll morph into the aqua and do some sort of aqua thingy or they'll morph into a crystal they have the ability to be the teachers of the new, of the new love. They are intolerant to just about everything. And what I mean by that is in all the foods should be organic, wheat-free, sugar-free, dairy-free, possibly be vegan, but not necessarily. Um, they can be intolerant to things, not so much allergic, but intolerant, even to like the carpets or... Um, I don't know about any of you, but I get really uh, triggered by the fluoro lights and the air conditioning in shopping centres. Um, and oh. they just do not cope with those sort of things. And so part of their teaching is to teach those around them, not just parents and teachers, but anyone around them, that there's bigger things to life. A lot of the children that are terminal, whether it be cot death or cancer or diabetes or whatever it is, or even Down syndrome, or when I was nursing, it was called retarded. Retarded means slow, mm. um, but you're not allowed to use that word, but medically it's called retarded. They were rainbows children, and they were here that looked into your soul 
and woke you up on some level. And in my uh, book, I actually talk about Bianca, who was born with no brain. She lived for a couple of days, and I knew the Western medicine was, I was, was nursing, and I knew Western medicine was going to guinea pig on this little girl. So I said to mum and dad, please just keep talking to her and love her. She is with you because it's not the brain that keeps us alive. And that um, after her death, I talked with mum and dad. I said, what did Bianca bring you? And they said, to wake up and not to be materialistic. And that's what these souls Mm. do. They take us right out of our supposed third dimension uh, comfort zone and take us out into what is real, which is love, which is non-judgment, which is, you know, be at one moment, or if that makes sense. Any yeah. questions on the rainbow? Now we're going to go into some little extra bits that are not in the books and I thought if it was all right with you that we would um, talk about what happens at certain ages and then we would also do some examples. Is that all right with all of you ladies? Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. So um, we're going into the Millennium Grid. This is actually a mathematical code. So I'm going to talk a bit woo-woo as well as grounded um, because my dream is to get this woo-woo out there. Sometimes I've got to speak it grounded, but by gosh, it's really out there, spacey, yummy stuff. So imagine this image that you see. It is three-dimensional. It's actually a sphere, and it's got a 10-point Merkaba inside it. So it's a pyramid within a pyramid, and this is a mathematical code to creation and to everything of what's happening to yourself in the world everywhere. And at certain ages, excuse me a moment, (coughs) at certain ages, we disconnect from the absolute. And the absolute is the totality of all reality. It's where we are born knowing anything and everything. And when we disconnect, um, we connect to the illusion of separation and to the fear-based emotions. Fear-based emotions, jealousy, awkwardness, guilt, uh, fear, anger, resentment, you know, all those sort of emotions. And we're supposed to. At this stage, we are supposed to. The more that we do this work and the more that we wake up, the more this will not be relevant. Um, And that supposedly is by the next millennium, the year 3000, which is a short, long time. And so when you know what happens to certain children uh, to certain to children at certain ages, you can actually support them, not only knowing their personality, but also what age are they. So I'm just going to do random ages, for example. If we go to the age of five, children start school at age of five. Until that, from birth through to five, they're totally free. They can go to the toilet when they want, have a cat nap when they want, eat when they want, do what, you know, it's free. But then they get to school and they have to ask an authority when they can go to the toilet, when they can eat. So they actually experience the duality of not freedom. They feel trapped. If we go to the age of six, six is about expression of myself. They've done one year at school. Well, they can't express themselves. What they're starting to do is disconnect from the codes of creation on purpose because they need to integrate into this third dimension world. And so if they can't express themselves, they'll get things like repetitive tonsillitis. If we go to the age of nine, a lot of boys um, at the age of nine, what happens is they start to get really grumpy, angry. Between zero and nine years old, children have uh, to learn that. The basic physical lessons. I need to learn how to eat, sleep, go to the toilet, walk and talk. You know, the physical things. But from age nine onwards, I know how to do all that. Now I've got to understand emotions and I've got to work out the grown-up world and I don't like it. So they get all grumpy because zero to nine, it's all about free-flowing movement and play. Now, this applies to all children of any color, race, dimension, 
personally disabled, abled, whatever you want to call it, everyone goes through this. Sometimes teachers will say, no, that's not the same for children with ASD or, you know, blah, blah, blah. It is. It's just us that put some patients on them. Age 11, I get so many parents and teachers say, oh my God, it's hormones. They've become so catty and bitchy and so moody and they won't do anything. No, no, no. It's age 11. It's all about no responsibility. It's all about the blame game because they're learning the illusion of separation. They're learning that here on this planet Earth, third dimension, what you do is you do blame everyone. So let's have a look. Kum Jong Un. It's all America's fault. Donald Trump, it's all Korea's fault. Politicians, it's all the public's fault. Public, it's all the politicians. We play that game here. And mm. so they're playing the earthly game. The pink and purple numbers don't mean anything. It's what I asked the graphic designer to do for a reason. The picture is gold, but in creating gold in graphic design work, it doesn't come out that sparkly, shiny gold. But let's pretend it's gold, cold. The pink numbers are the disconnections from the absolute. So 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. That's where what kids will sometimes have like a little bit of emotional trauma or ascension, descension symptoms like colds, flus type things because they're breaking away from remembering who they are and connecting to everything. The purple numbers or even numbers are where they get to integrate. So at age one, child turns one, they go through a disconnection. Child at two integrates that integration and disconnection. The terrible twos, no such a thing. It's the hearing and the senses actually come in for a child. And so when the senses come in, the children don't know how to deal with it. Um, age three, scary monsters come in. It's the illusions come in. But there's no scary monsters. The scary monster is that we see the duality of love, which is fear. Look at four-year-olds. They're all soft and smushy and cuddly and delicious. Hmm. Um, so there is a cycle. So I'm just giving you some snippets because I want to do an example. And if you want to know more about the Millennium Grid, there is a two-day course on the Sunshine Coast in June. But there's also uh, 13 video clips on Millennium Education YouTube channel that you can watch as well. I try to give as much free stuff as I can to support everyone. So in the cycles, in Atlantis and Lemuria and all the ancient times, they understood those codes of pattern and that there was a soul evolution. And the children understand this too. They understand they're meant to forget. And so we go through a process of every 13 years, not 12 like the Mayans, but 13, to understand I am love, forget the process, and then come back to loving so by the time that we're 66 to 78, 13 year cycle, we see everything in love. 79 to 91 years of age, we, we understand we've got great wisdom, but we haven't evolved. Sometimes 66 to 78 year olds are actually playing fear based. It's like they regress backwards. And again, that's where mm. the children come in as grandchildren, great grandchildren to push the boundaries to help everyone evolve. So how do I sometimes use the grid? Definitely for me, I work out where my family is and what ages we all are, and then I know what's happening. So for me, I am 51, which is a number 12. So a lot of things are completing in my life. Um, my PA um, uh, is no longer working for me after six years. Um, my cleaner after six years is no longer working for me. I've got a new PA and a new cleaner. Uh, my oldest son is 24, responsibility. He's actually taking responsibility for his life and his health. My other mm -hmm. son, he's 18. It's all about freedom. And the freedom, I can drive, I can drink, I can do what I want or so he thinks. And then there's my husband who is 53 and he's having new beginnings of number one. So when I understand the soul evolution and what the numbers mean, 
especially to do with millennium children, the new millennium, it allows me to be in heart space, what the millennium children try to teach, rather than go, well, you know what, my 18 year old is such a self-centered so-and-so, you know, he just leaves the dishes on the bench and he tells everybody off and then, oh no, he's a number five. Yeah, I know, it's all about freedom. Now, again, go to the millennium um, grid on the Millennium Education YouTube and you'll find out how to work this and how to um, play with it. It's the most incredible thing. Plus, if you know where you are, such as 2018, it's all about freedom here in number five. Um, when you know what year it is as well, you can play with this. Um, I run all my courses and events based on this and also another code called the Millennium Calendar. So let's go to some tips. My time is running out so quickly and I'm trying to give you as many things as I can. What can you do to empower these millennium children? Remember, they're from birth till about 25 years old, but they're also really all of us as well. Listen. And when I say listen, I mean listen with your heart. Listen to what they're saying. So if the star child is saying, I just want to die, I can't be here, they're possibly in one of those age disconnections, maybe five, seven or nine years old. And they're saying, I can't cope with the pain of forgetting who I am and that there's some sort of death within their soul because they're forgetting that they need to do this. Listen with the aqua that punches or screams or tells you that you're a so-and-so or they hate you. They're hurting. Listen to the crystal child that doesn't say anything and internalizes and might not come out of her room or might be really catty bitchy as a teenager. Listen to the child that won't eat or listen to the child that is gorging on chocolate. What's going on? Listen to what they're wearing. Are they wearing drab colors? And listening is allowing them to speak with no judgment and not answering back. It's allowing, and the key thing is, Thank you. Thank you so much for expressing. Thank you. Another tip is give simple instructions. My golly gosh, do we adults confuse the pajamas out of children, especially teenagers. Simple instructions. So I hear parents say, Johnny, pick up your shoes. Now, you shouldn't have done that. Now, I'm really costly to do that. I have to vacuum the floor. And the child has heard, la, 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 la. Johnny, put your shoes away, thank you, and leave it alone. Let them do it. If it's an aqua, they'll rebel. They'll put the shoes away when you tell them, but they'll put the shoes away. The crystal, she'll put the shoes away and it'll be all very pretty. And the star child, he'll pick up one shoe and forget the other one because he's gone into cosmos land or he's too busy working out his computer games. Give simple instructions of fun. Maybe make a post-it note. Maybe make a list, a reward system. Maybe a whiteboard, a sticker system. But the key thing is keep instructions really, really simple. And make them fun. Hey, pop your shoes away. Then we can jump on the trampoline. Yes, I know that you want to play PlayStation. Pop your shoes away. Then you can have PlayStation. And the key is with instructions, what you're doing is you're teaching them to be able to shine their brilliance. So these gorgeous children, they have no understanding of separation, but we adults separate them. I'm very blessed in those that have purchased the books, so all of you tonight on the webinar and also in the Millennium Children Facebook group and those that have done courses or are about to do courses with me, you'll understand it's not about being separate. They just do not understand why do I have to be over here? Why am I called that? Why am I dumb? Why am I, or the ACL? Why can't I have coffee with the teachers in the staff room? Why are the teachers allowed? <laughs> they don't understand the illusion of separation. They're definitely here to break the limits, just like this dog <laughs> pulling away the no dog sign. I'm sure that's what my dog would do. Break the rules and the limits. We do not fit into the old ways of learning anymore. My generation, as I said, I'm 51. I remember as a teenager listening to Pink Floyd, We Don't Need No Education. And I used to think, oh my gosh, that's my song. And yet my 18-year-old, when he was about 15, probably about the same age, he said, mom, listen to this song. 
is so amazing. It was the same song, by the way. It is. There's got to be a new way to educate. And to educate means to enlighten or to put the spotlight on. And these children are bucking the system. Even that recent uh, shooting in America, um, I actually give love to all the kids as well as that uh, star child. He was just screaming out for help. They even heard it before, isolated, alone, etc. Why didn't he get the help? Why didn't he get the support? They know anything is possible, that pigs fly, dogs fly, and they can fly, and that everything and anything is there to tap into. We're born this way. They gently forget, but they will remember, and they might do it out of getting tonsillitis or a cold or breaking a leg, but they know anything is possible whatsoever and they see the oneness in anything this was an experiment done that they scientists put faux fur on little piglets with this mother who uh, could not feed her uh, cubs and the piglets dressed up in the faux fur were able to suckle from the tiger or female tiger whatever that's called and the tiger s i'm going to call her she just mothered the piglets until they were fully grown so Millennium children see the oneness in everything. They don't see that we're segregated whatsoever. And I always think that when there's something in my child, still today, my 18 and 24-year-old, if there's something that I've got an issue with them or something that I'm upset with, it's not them. If there is, some, there is anything we wish to change in the child, we should first examine it and see whether it it is not something that could be better changed in ourselves. They are my mirror. They are here to teach me as well as I'm here to teach them and be that oneness. And so when people uh, say comments down the street or in the supermarket, I hear all sorts of crazy things. Um, I just think, oh, really? The child's just showing what's in you because we're all one. So we've come to an end, but I've got five minutes that, um, I can do some questions and I've got um, a question in the typing here. Uh, oh, 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 lots of, oh, lots of questions. Hang on, hang on. Uh, we've got, what have we got? Vicky, what about seven years old? Seven years old on the grid, they split from themselves between zero and seven. They're androgynous. They know they're androgynous, male, female. They split from themselves, the metaphysical part from the self leaves. And so they can say, my best friend's going, my imaginary friend's going. They start to forget part of the metaphysical side. Um, uh, Joe, yes. Uh, if myself, 54, and my 15-year-old are in the same spot on the grid, is that why we are <laughs> butting heads? Awesome. Uh, he looks disappointed at me. No. Yes, no. 15 is a number two in the grid, and number two when you're 15 is all about judgment. Whereas 54, you're in that next cycle of absolute love and seeing everything as love, but in the second cycle, which is uh, 14 through to 26, it's all about seeing the masculine. So the headbutt can be, you know, maybe similar personalities, more aqua aqua type thing, or um, star star. Um, but 15-year-olds can be very critical. I remember my 18-year-old when he was 15. Oh, you're not wearing that to school. Oh, my God, you put that jumper away. So sometimes <laughs> bear in mind it's personality as well as uh, the ages. But it's meant to be. And, again, if you know that they're very judgmental, you just thank you so much. That's the key words with these millennium children. Thank you so much. So I'll just see if there's any more questions. Um, my son and I are the same. Also, he'll be seven, I'll be 46. Yeah, look, sometimes when you're in the same zone, you're in different soul evolution. One to 13 is the first cycle, whereas 40, life begins at 40, um, 40 through to 52 is the fourth cycle. And so you're evolved and seeing the bigger picture. Again, this is on those uh, YouTube clips as well as in the course. So um, before I wind up, does anyone have any questions? Because I've talked really fast and I'm giving lots of questions to you, uh, lots of info for you. Um, Thank you, Vicky. Um, and if you're in the Millennium Children Facebook group, know you can ask lots of questions there. It's a place of interaction and connection. 
Um, there might be links I can put on for you that uh, of an article or whatever. Today we had a couple of people sharing recipes which I loved. Um, chocolate something or others, I forgot what they were, and a lemon something or other with avocados. Great, share recipes and ideas as well. Ah, yes, the avo mousse, that's it. Thank you so much, Lulu. Very, very good, <laughs> very good. Um, so any other questions, ladies? Yeah, Jean, I have a question. Please do. Um, these these beautiful children, as they grow into young adults and, and get into relationships, do they um, are they drawn to the same personality type as, sure. say, themselves or yes. are they go yes, total no. opposite? Yes, no. So in yes, no. the millenn yes, my answer in all teaching is yes, no, because we play this definitive third dimension adult, yes, they are, but then mm -hmm. the absolute or fifth dimension is no, anything's possible. In door mm -hmm. one, the millennium children, when you go through the personalities, I've tried to specifically say like the name, say crystal child, the symbol, what it is, their gifts, their challenges, and put it in dot form but with a little bit of explanation. Um, things like their body alignment, health, learning style, love language, food, exercise and relationship. So if I read the crystal child, crystal children can be married or alone. It depends if they are focused on their work, profession or assisting the family. If they are for the academic profession, such as getting their PhD, they don't have time for family. Some crystal children don't want children as it will affect their body and image. Others want a child mm -hmm. as an accessory. Then I go into personalities. Mm. And, and remember, this is very general because everyone's still an individual. Mm. It talks about personalities as well that aquas, aqua males are very drawn to crystal females, footballers, that at the strong sporty type and then they want the trophy good figure type um, or um, aqua that's more uh, controlling might have the submissive crystal and be a control freak with her. So there are um, uh, um, attractions. Aquas and aquas, now remember, male or female, aquas and aquas love each other and then hate each other. And so they love each other and then they'll punch the crap out of each other. Um, There's that passion. Uh, yeah, it's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then, you know, buzz off naughty. And then you've got the stars. <laughs> stars don't relate to aquas at all because they're very physical. And they don't relate to crystals because crystals want to change them and make them look pretty. Stars relate to That's stars true. very, very much. Yeah. Occasionally a star male will marry a female aqua and that's because stars like systems and they know aquas will take control and stars can be lazy and now I'm being very quick here in the conversations but yeah. um, it's there are alignments and there are clashes um, I've got duality of my boys not only in the millennium group that one's number five and the other one's number 11 which is opposite numbers and one's an aqua and one's a star and yet, at the moment, they are getting along so beautifully. They both drive, they're both cooking, they're both aligning with each other so they can get along and then hate each other, <laughs> if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's really, can they align? If you look at the star children, say, in politics, they're so nasty to each other, the way they bang each other out in politics. <laughs> uh, but... That bantering is that they're getting along. Or on the football field, yeah. the aquas are getting True. along as they punch each other up as such. Um, yeah. So yeah. ultimately, we all get along and then take in what age, take in the environment, take in personal perception, mm. take in uh, all of it, um, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions? No other questions. Ladies, thank you so much for an amazing, amazing night. Have you enjoyed the webinar? I have. It's wonderful. 
very quick, lots and lots of information. And as I said, if you've got the, remember the physical books are now on my website, millenniumeducation.com. You can purchase those. You can highlight them and mark them or whatever. I'm a physical book person. I, I don't like reading online. Um, and it's categorized down so that you can just chunk through it slowly. The four personalities are separate, but I ask you to understand they're actually all one. They're not separate. Mm. We are all, all of yeah. them and that you'll resonate with different, and so there's crossovers of personalities within there. Um, I could have written the Millennium Children personalities and their gifts and whatever probably for the next 10 years, but I thought I'd better yeah. stop at the two books in a week. Um, please, if you want to learn some more, come and join me on the 7th and 8th of April here on the Sunshine Coast. Um, this is a very interactive, fun play course. Uh, normally the course is 660, but because of the books, I'm launching it as 440. I don't discount the courses. Um, they are accredited courses, but you're going to go for a bushwalk and you're going to have a ball of fun. It's not a hard hike or anything. Then we're going to climb an extinct volcano on Sunday morning. And I can't tell you, we have such a ball of fun up there playing on lava and all sorts of things like that. Um, and you're going to learn about... Uh, the experiential part of what's happening for the children. Plus, you know, it might go through your own stuff as well, um, might come up. It's not about healing the inner child. I think we're always doing that on some level. But by gosh, it is my favourite course to share because there's lots and lots of fun and activities. Um, so thank you so, so much. And if you can help me share this info out and the books out, if you know of schools or teachers or kindies or childcare centers that I can donate the books to or speak at, please let me know. And thank you from my heart for being here and supporting your children or children that you know or work with or uh, connect with. I am so honored by the whole process. So Thank you, Jean. My absolute Thank you, Jean. pleasure. Have loads and loads of fun playing. Um, and just remember, as I have written in three books and I'll write in all the other books I'm yet to write, you're already perfect, just in different stages of remembering. So from my heart mm -hmm. to yours, lots and lots of love. Bye. Thank you, Jane, to you. Bye. Bye. Bye.